Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Good morning, good morning. Happy Friday for those of you who work a traditional work week. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Melissa L. Watkins, Integrated Energy Therapy Master Instructor Teacher and Channeler. And I'm really excited because today I get to teach integrated energy therapy. So I will be down at Crystal Clear Wellness uh, in the Health and Wellness Center. And I'm really excited. Um, we're going to have a really nice cohort and um, help those who are ready to step into their working and healing with the angels, the nine healing angels. Um, if you want more information about integrated energy therapy, all you have to do is go to learniet.com or guidance311.com link in the description box. So it's Friday. And typically I don't do daily guidance on Friday. For those of you who've been following me for a really long time, like typically Friday is just pick a card in the um, group for the weekend. And then um, I usually put out a weekly video either Sunday or Monday, right? But uh, so last night I dropped uh, the four keys to uh, 5D consciousness and what you need to know there. And um, so I thought, okay, like I'm covered, right? Like I've given you lots of support. And then Spirit was like, nope, we need to talk because uh, Wednesday, and we're still in the energy of this Virgo new moon, which is all about beginnings. But Virgo is all about getting things in order. And I feel like one of the things that um, Spirit was bringing me for all of you today was this idea of lack mentality. Where in our 3D consciousness, we can really get into, I don't have enough. I'm not safe and stable. And it really is uh, a societal programming. It really is uh, parental programming. That whole idea of if I don't have what people think I should have, I'm not safe and stable. If I don't have what my parents think I should have, I'm not safe and stable. If I don't have what my neighbors have, I'm not safe and stable, right? And like there's this whole advertising industry that tells us what we what we are supposed to have, right? And that is what is going to bring us happiness and keep us safe and stable and give us the life we want and all the things, right? But um, one of the things that Mercury retrograde, which um, is going direct today, uh, yesterday, tomorrow, uh, wherever you are in the world, um, it's kind of bringing us into new energy of really allowing us to step into living life more fully and also getting out of this idea of not having enough where things are going to start going forward in our lives in a way where the opportunities are going to show up, the people are going to show up, situations are going to show up, and it's are you ready to receive it, right? So lack mentality is this mentality of I don't have enough, whatever it is. And it's not that you don't have enough. It's that you think you don't have enough. And the example that I use for this is back when I was making the most money that I've ever made in a year was the year that I felt like I had the least amount of money because I wasn't grateful for what I had. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I didn't feel like I was achieving. I didn't feel like I um, was in abundance, right? I, I felt like I still needed more. I was still on that conveyor belt of striving and driving and getting more and doing more. And so I was working full time and then I was doing a part time after school program. And I was just basically spending more than I was making because I was trying to keep up, right? Keep up with all the things, right? Um, have all the things, whether it was, um, you know, the designer handbag, the vacation, um, you know, taking my daughter to different events, letting her um, uh, have her extracurricular activities. I wasn't grateful. I wasn't grateful that I was able to just maintain us. I wasn't grateful that we had a safe place to live. I wasn't grateful that we had really um, reliable transportation. I wasn't grateful that we had enough food. I wasn't grateful that I could make my bills. Like I was still thinking I didn't have enough. And it was a mental construct. It was a frequency, a vibrational frequency of fear that I didn't have enough. And I feel like that's what's kind of in the um, atmosphere right now, this idea that we don't have enough. And it's not that we don't. It's that we aren't being grateful for what we do have. 
we're not being grateful for all the things that are going right in our lives. Even if you don't have enough, right? Because I know there are some of you that you're like, but I don't have enough. But here's the secret. And this is what I learned. Um, because after that year, putting myself in that lack situation, creating lack in my life, creating more lack in my life, um, it became a situation where I really ended up being um, in a desperate or despair situation of not having a safe home, not having reliable transportation, not having the job that would continue to give me the money that would make me safe and stable. Because I wasn't in gratitude, I lost all the stability that I had gained for myself because I wasn't grateful and I wasn't in the energy of um, gratitude and mindfulness and presence. I was projecting into the future, right? I was buying into the idea that I had to have X, Y, and Z, um, whether that was keeping up with the Joneses or because that's what people told me, that's what advertising told me, that's what society told me, or um, because I was still in this lack mentality of, you know, that family programming of we don't have enough. We never have enough. No matter how much we have, we don't have enough. And a lot of us of my generation were given that programming because their parents were given that programming. Because if you think about it, the generation previous to our parents, right, were the effect of the Great Depression. They truly knew what it was to go without. And so they were always working to have just enough. And so they taught their children, right? that you had to strive and drive, that you always had to be putting things away, saving things, working hard, keep having things come in because you never wanted to be in that situation of not having what you needed. The problem with that was what it taught us, their children, was that we never had enough, no matter what we had, no matter how much we had, right? So now we have to switch that programming. In this Virgo new moon, because this Virgo new moon was all about like decluttering and getting organized and really looking around your life and seeing where um, you needed to kind of let things go because it was in your way. So for many of us, by trying to stay safe and stable, by having all the things, we've actually accumulated way more than we need. And it's actually now weighing on us. All of the stuff is weighing on us and now it's keeping us from being able to move forward in our lives because um, it, it's this albatross around our neck. Um, think about it. I mean, there are whole stores now on organizational systems because we have so much stuff. Um, one of the things that really um, shocked me about five years ago was learning that people were this just blew my mind. People were going out and getting storage units to store the stuff that they didn't have room for in their home or their garage or their shed. What? You have that much stuff? So now you're paying monthly to hold on to stuff that you're not using on a daily basis, but you need just in case or because other people have it? Like, boggled my mind boggled my mind. I had no idea that that was going on. <laughs> this is where we're at societally. This is where we're at. And this is where we kind of need to step back with ourselves. And especially in this energy of the Virgo new moon and now Mercury growing um, direct, like we are being propelled into this new paradigm of moving forward. But there's a lot of energy right now that's allowing us to release the stuff that's just weighing on us and holding us back, whether we recognize it or not. So I feel like that was the message that I really needed to kind of come in uh, and talk about today is this idea that having too much stuff is actually holding you back. It's stopping you. This mentality of I have to have more, I have to strive and drive to have more is actually holding you back from living your passion and being abundant in the ways that matter. 
in relationship, in passion, in purpose, in self-love, in compassion. And so, great. Yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. I was there and I, I'm, you know, I'm probably still there to some extent. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Serena. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Elizabeth. <laughs> Amen. Um, so yeah, so I, I just, so, okay. So how do we get out of this, right? How do we get out of this? How do we get out of lack mentality? How do we get out of that feeling in our gut that we're not safe and stable that propels us into continuing to work hard and to buy all the things and do all the things that really don't fill up our cup? We're doing it because we've been told or programmed that those are the things that we have to have or those are the things we have to do, right? How do we release that? And honestly, it's just getting present. It's just really getting present and looking at how you're thinking. Because if you look about the, the, the mental programming, the tape that runs in your head that's telling you, I don't have enough, then we have to stop that tape. We have to change that programming, right? And the other thing is, the energy we'll put out is the energy we get back. So you're going to be prosperous. You're going to be abundant, right? is when you raise your vibrational frequency out of the fear and into the compassion, right? And start embodying love and compassion, then things flow to you. You don't have to strive and drive and you don't have to be afraid that you're in lack because you've released that vibration, Yes, I'm getting yelled at. Yes, I'm getting yelled at. So that was the message that I am uh, being guided to bring you. Be and so it's all the law of attraction, but it's more than just the law of attraction because the law of attraction is what you put out is what you get back. And for many people, you know, especially like 20 years ago, like everything on the internet was law of attraction, right? Law of attraction. I have the secret. I have the secret. I have the secret. Here's the secret. Yes, it's positive thinking, but it's positive feeling. You've got to get that energy down into your emotional body. And that's where people can really have a hard time flipping that script from fear to safety and security, right? That root chakra, because some of that programming is very fight or flight, very survival, very much in your root chakra. And that is trauma that needs to be healed. That programming is subconscious. And for some of you, um, and, and this was myself included, I didn't recognize how ingrained that subconscious programming was, that lack mentality of, um, you know, you have to be striving and driving all the time. And um, it wasn't until, you know, I got out on my own um, that I recognized like the message that, that was right through my whole childhood, right, was money, 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 money. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough money. And I get it. You know, we were a family of eight one income household. Yes, it was a decent income, but there was many of us, right? So that program was always there. There's not enough. There's not going to be enough. There's not going to be enough. There's not going to be enough. There was enough. And they manifested what they needed when they needed it because my mother had such a strong faith. But my father, you know, and, and men have this fear because that is their role, right? Their role is to provide. Um, so we can't, um, you know, get upset with them because they have this fear, but we can, you know, we can all look at this fear and go, okay, we don't need to hold on to it. You know, yes, we need to, to take the steps we need to take, right? We need to, you know, use our finances, our resources wisely, right? We have to be responsible, right? But we also have to know that we can manifest what we need, that we can put the vibration out to allow things to come to us without the striving and driving in the fear. Good morning, Suzanne. So um, it is a frequency. Money is a frequency. And when you recognize this, you uh, can understand that the money you put out, right? The money you put out will return to you if you're putting it out in gratitude, if you're putting it out with positive expectation that you're getting it back, right? Whether it comes back in resource, whether it comes back in um, uh, 
you know, a, a, a hand up, whether it comes back in, um, in all different ways. It may not come back in money, but think about all the ways you can get fair exchange in energy fair exchange, right? Where someone is giving you really great advice or, or they're networking, they're giving you a network or a contact that then helps you make money. Like there's so many different ways for fair exchange. And if we can start opening ourselves up to that, I mean, bartering, um, a lot, you know, uh, uh, exchanging services. I can't tell you how many people I exchange services with. I can't tell you how many people, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a reciprocity, right? I give my energy, they give their energy. And it isn't always a financial thing. I mean, yes, we need financial in right now, this modern day and age to, you know, buy the things and pay for the things we need to buy and pay for. I get it, but we don't have to be afraid of it. And that's what I'm trying to get to. We don't have to be afraid of it. We don't have to keep up with the Joneses. Joneses. We don't have to be um, afraid that we don't have or are not safe and stable because all we're doing is drawing more of that to us. So we have to change the programming. We have to change that fear in our belly, right? And that takes effort. All right, let's pull some cards to see what Spirit wants to add to this. And to be honest with you, um, because a lot of this programming was so deeply ingrained in me, um, especially root chakra, and I had some real early trauma with safety and stability and neglect when I was a child, that um, it was one of the hurdles that uh, integrated energy therapy really helped me to overcome, release, and really put behind me. And uh, I just wanted to put that out there, that there are ways in which uh, you can overcome this. You don't have to stay in this old programming. You don't have to stay in living in the fear. You don't have to stay um, not receiving, not having. Okay. So the first one out that wanted to flip out is the Eight of Wands. Yeah. The Great and Exalted God, number 49, Vehul, grandeur, makes one passionate toward God. Yeah, the Eight of Wands. I mean, this is where I kind of like that this is the card that flipped out. Because here's the thing. If you are trusting your faith, if you're trusting your team of guides, angels, ascended masters, if you're building that relationship with God, God consciousness, all that is, Goddess, whoever you believe in, right? But having the faith, surrendering is having the faith that everything is working out in the way that you need, but you have to believe it and you have to change the programming that's being played in your mental body, right? You're not your thoughts. You're not. You're that which is behind your thoughts. And for many of us, we have to get into that awareness. Oh, I'm not my thoughts. That thought I don't have to think. I can change what I think. Yes. And I feel like the Eight of Wands is coming out to support that, that God is great, right? Grandeur, right? There's something bigger that we tap into that is helping us to draw to us what it is we want. So having the faith in that, surrendering, letting go of the how and the when, that's not for us to know or do. Surrender. And it is a practice. And it really does take practice. It took me a good decade, honestly. It took me a good decade. So changing your thoughts. Oh, happy Friday, Jacqueline. Yes, Cynthia. So Cynthia, I love this. I'm just going to share this so everybody can see this, right? If we practice the attitude of gratitude, we can eliminate the feeling of lack. Yeah. So one of the things that I talk about um, and have talked about very consistently um, is for those of you who really do struggle with lack, who really do struggle with not being able to manifest what it is you need, right? Not even what you want, what you need, right? This is what got me off the couch in that one bedroom apartment of my mother's, sharing it with her and my daughter. This is what got me into a job 
when I had lost my career, I'd lost my certification, I lost my ability to do the thing I loved, right? This is what got me um, all of my stuff back from thousands of miles away. Um, this is what got me back into living safe and stable. For 21 consecutive days, every day, I used a gratitude journal, writing down 10 things I was grateful for. And the job showed up literally a week and a half, two weeks into it. Didn't even take the whole 21 days. And I continue to use gratitude. I continue to use a gratitude journal. Maybe not as consistently, but I do use gratitude every day. So for those of you who are like, but Melissa, I need to jumpstart. Melissa, I really, I'm in a bind. Like I'm in a hole. I'm in a hole and I haven't been able to manifest. I don't know how to manifest. And vibrationally, you probably are having a hard time manifesting because you're still holding on to a lot of trauma and drama. So one of the easiest, fastest ways to slingshot yourself up that vibrational uh, chart, right, into higher vibrational frequency to be able to manifest, especially what you need. And I was definitely in the needs, right? I needed a job. I needed a home. I needed safety and stability for me and my daughter. Gratitude journal, 21 days, 10 things you're grateful for. And I'm here to tell you, God is my witness. My things I were grateful for were so super simple. It wasn't the big stuff. It was not. I had nothing big to be grateful for. I had that the sun was out. I had that I got to take a walk that day. Remember, I was jobless and homeless. I had a lot of time on my hands. So I'd go to the library. I would update my resume. I would fill out job applications every day. And then I would do gratitude. I would take a walk. I would let the sun hit my face. I would clean. I would organize. I would cook good meals for my family because I had I had the time, right? Mom was working full time. My kid was in school. I had time. So I was doing the things to keep us going, right? But I was also practicing gratitude every day. Grateful that the co coffee was hot grateful that the sun was shining, grateful that I had a, a pleasant walk, grateful that the birds were singing to me, grateful for that butterfly I saw, grateful for um, the laundry being done in grace and ease, no problems, right? Nobody in my way, nobody trying to do it around me, just, you know, because it was a communal laundry room. Whatever, whatever went well that day, I was grateful for it. And I would write it down in my journal, 10 things every night. Start there, do that. And then you can work on the mindfulness. Then you can work on law of attraction and uh, law, of, law of correspondence, right? As above, so below, as within, so without. But when you need that quick jump start, right? Gratitude journal. I'm going to spout it until uh, my last breath. That is the way that when you are in despair, yes, Jacqueline, I love it. <clears throat> when you're in despair, when you're at the bottom of the barrel, when you have no resource, when you have no support, um, thank God I had some support. But for those of you who don't feel like you have any support, get in connection with your team of guides, angels, and ascended masters through a gratitude journal. Even if you feel like you don't feel spirit, even if you feel like you don't know who they are, it doesn't matter. They know who you are. Source knows who you are. God, God consciousness, Christ consciousness, goddess, they know who you are. Absolutely. <clears throat> you got to change how you think. And if you have, are having a hard time with that because the fear is so great and it's gripping you so hard. Get into gratitude. Get into gratitude. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to be honest with you, right? It's been a little slow business-wise. Um, and I don't, I have, you know, I don't really have the multiple streams of income that I had um, six months ago because one of my streams, um, it ended, right? And the other streams were doing so well. I was like, I'll just keep doing this, right? And it's kind of slowed down. So of course, um, you know, the mental body of me goes, oh my gosh, the emotional body of me didn't get scared, which was um, interesting because for those of you who feel that fear at a visceral level, right, to not feel it 
um, because I felt it for so long, so long. I mean, I just look back at my 30s and my 40s, uh, my, my, my late 20s, right? The fear, the programming was running my life. And I was broke and I was unhappy and I was unhealthy. I was the heaviest. I was the brokest financially and emotionally, right? And now I use my gratitude journal. I, I just, I get into gratitude. And, you know, so last night I was grateful and I just used my gratitude journal. I did some uplifting reading. Um, I just got into the energy of the angels, right? In this morning, things are better. Things are better. So we don't always know when it's going to come in. We don't know where it's going to come from. And that is the practice of surrender. You do what you can. You do what you can physically, right? So I've been putting out the content. I've been networking with my people, um, just trying to still be uh, beneficial and supportive in the ways that I can, right? And then I let it go. And then I let it go. I actually went to one of my favorite places yesterday to a lake. And I literally just sat at that picnic table and I read a fictional book. Um, I read these um, faith-based romance. And they're almost like a Harlequin, but they're faith-based. And so there's always like a faith message in them, which is really, really um beautiful and they're platonic like there's no steamy sex scene you know like back in the day right they like at the end they might they might share a kiss or you know they might hold hands like it's so different <laughs> but that's where i am vibrationally right i just want the message i want the connection to spirit i want the connection to the ethers and all there is and in the grid the matrix uh you know, that's where source love is. And um, so, yeah, if you didn't um, check out the four keys to 5D consciousness, please do. Please do. Yeah. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. So there's a little insight to my <laughs> current life for those of you who are like, yeah, she's uh, di she's different. She's not. She's she's out there. She's out there. All right. So who else wants to come in? Oh, Khalil, justice. Here it is. The in, the invocable God. Yes. Invoke God. The invocable God. Invoke God. Khalil. Uh, justice makes truth known in court cases, causes innocence to prevail. Oh, I love that, Cynthia. I love that. Look, she says, um, I've been watching faith-based movies. It brings up our emotional. Yeah. Like, seriously, like I'm definitely working on Oh, thank you, Darlene. Thank you. I appreciate the four keys video on YouTube was great. Thank you. Thank you. I'd been sitting on that video for about a week and a half um, because I too still need to get out of my own way. My vibration still uh, gets wonky every once in a while, guys. So thank you for um, that. I truly appreciate it, Darlene. So yeah, justice. That's what's coming to you. That's what's coming in. That's what you um, having the faith. That's what you raising your vibrational frequency through uh, a gratitude journal will do for you, right? It'll bring in the justice. It'll bring in the balance. It'll bring in the positive outcome that you're looking for, whether it's a need or a want, abundance, prosperity, relationship, money, resource, opportunity. You have to raise your frequency so spirit can bring it in. So Abraham, uh, who was channeled by Esther Hicks for years, I watched her and she would talk about the vortex, right? Everything's in your vortex. And I'd be like, how do you get in the vortex? How do you? I don't know how to get in the vortex. Like I could feel it. Like I just need to get in the vortex. <laughs> I had no idea how to get in the vortex. This is how you get in the vortex. This is it. This is it. You get into gratitude. You raise your frequency. You 21 days, 10 things every day you're grateful for, and you get in the vortex. Even if you just get into the edge of the vortex and start just manifesting little things, right? It's okay because those little things will manifest it or, or, or turn into big things, right? My little job that um, I was working in a dealership selling cars. That's what got me off my mother's couch. 
I went, my, my cousin contacted my mother who said, I've got a friend who works in an office at a dealership. They need a title clerk. The pay's not great. Actually, the pay was going to be what I was making on unemployment, but it was going to get me out of the house, right? So I go to the interview thinking I'm just going to be making like $400 a week. It's not really going to change my situation a whole lot, right? Because I've that's what I've been using to pay my car insurance and you know buy groceries for me and my kid and whatnot. I get there. I talk for the lady, uh, the uh, general manager of the dealership. We hit it off. We talk literally for a good half hour, 45 minutes in this interview. And at the end, she says, I'm putting you on the sales floor. I was like, what? What? Sometimes that small opportunity can turn into what you need way more than you think. So Sometimes we just have to lean into it. Like, I was like, yeah, I'll be a title clerk. Like I have, you know, <laughs> I have lots of education. I have lots of experience, but sure, I'll go make $400 a title clerk because I am humble. I got nothing right now. I got no home. I got no prospects. The only thing I had was my car, my kid, and our summer clothes. All of my stuff was, it was three states away and I had no job, Right. I had to get in that vortex and I didn't know how. I didn't know how to get in the vortex. And it was the gratitude journal that did it. Balance, justice coming in, right? That's all you need to balance yourself out. Balance the fear out with positivity, with the feeling of gratitude. You're not going to overcome the fear. You're not going to negate the fear. You're not going to make the fear go away, but you can lean into it. You can have courage. You can go despite the fear, which is exactly what I did. I got myself dressed. I put on the best clothes I had. I uh, put on my makeup. I did my hair. I went to that interview. I was going to knock that interview out of the park. I'd been interviewing for years. I had interviewed in front of panels of people to get an education job. I could do this. She put me on the sales floor. I made a base salary and a commission. Got us the hell off that couch. Sometimes that's all you need. You need that one thing. Justice. You need that one thing. You need that balance. Invoke your help. Invoke your team of guides, angels, and ascended masters. You're welcome. You're welcome, darling. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I'm feeling like that's what we got from that deck, but I really want to go to, speaking of high vibrational frequency, um, we're going to get a card or two from the Amanda Ellis uh, Christ Consciousness Self Mastery Oracle. Because I feel like um, the high vibra vibration of Christ wants to come in, right? The Ascended Master Christ, the Teacher Christ. Um, yeah. I do the gratitude journal, guys. I'm, like I said, I'm not consistent with it, but I do it at least once or twice a week. And I'm always doing thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, when something goes well, or I have a great conversation, or I have a great session, um, Whatever it is, I'm always thankful. I'm always thankful they're here supporting me, helping me support you, giving me what I need to give you and myself. And it's all good stuff. Peace, calm center, calm mind. There it is. Yeah. Getting into your vortex is getting into peace. And getting into peace, especially when things aren't going well, when there's not enough money, you don't know where enough money's coming from. You don't know where an opportunity is coming from. You don't know where a resource is coming from. You have no idea, right? It's really hard to get in this kind of balance and peace because the fear is just rampant. I mean, when it is that weight in your belly, it is really hard to get into peace. Feel peace, no peace, right? This is where getting into the high vibration of gratitude can help you bring balance into that fear which then allows you into the vortex, into manifesting, into receiving, into opportunity, into that phone call out of the blue. That idea that just pops into your head 
and makes all the difference. Yeah. Joseph, fathering and responsibility. This is interesting. Um, this car just came out and it might have come out. So at the tail end of the uh, Four Keys video that I just um, put up yesterday, I believe this is one of the cards that came out at the end. I did uh, um, some cards to kind of support the message at the end um, with this deck only. And I believe this is one of the cards that came out because, yeah, sometimes you have to drop into your masculine energy sometimes being creative and nurturing um, to get the job done so for some of you it is going to be kind of stepping more into your divine masculine right making the lists doing the the work um being responsible taking care of the tasks uh so that you can um move your situation move your situation yeah, for some of you, you need to balance out that um, divine feminine with the divine masculine. Um, that is really going to help you change things. Paul, awakening and transformation. Yeah. This is why it's all coming up for you, because it's time to transform. It's time to not be in those lower frequencies of resentment and greed and fear and worthlessness and powerlessness, right? Worthiness, unworthiness. It's time. It's time for you to awaken and transform, to step into your divinity, your sovereignty, and your magnificence so that you can embody who you came here to be. And you can't do that if you're playing small, if you're only worried about what the neighbors have or what society tells you you're supposed to have and do, right? Mm -mm. No, that's not going to get you into your sovereignty and divinity. This is about changing your vibrational frequency so you can start receiving. You can get into receptivity. So, Gratitude journal is the fastest way to start that process. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, like I said, I wasn't, I was surprised I was coming on to do this today because I wasn't really planning on it. Fridays are typically my day off of, of live, which is probably why I'm showing up so au naturel and Morning, morning. Good morning, everyone. So if you're watching on the replay, thank you for being here. Please hashtag replay, like, subscribe, heart, fair exchange. I appreciate all of it. I truly, truly do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. Um, I just am so appreciative. This is... Um, it's been a wild ride, guys. It's, you know, we're going on seven years and never thought this is what I would be doing. Um, but here we are. So if you've not checked out my new playlist for light workers, um, and I can't even remember like what the whole title is. So let's go look. Let's go look at what the whole title is. Um So for those of you who don't know, this is looks like that, Realizing the Divinity Within, which you'll notice that is from my website. And then the playlist is a oh, Lightworker in 5D Consciousness Ascension for this. I'm trying to see what the whole thing says. Well, anyway. Um, and the newest video in that is four keys to consciousness and this is what it looks like you're like we don't care we're gonna go look anyway but that's that's the new one so those that's the the um this is the playlist for um light workers and ascending and there's a meditation there there's a meditation there for you all who are raising your frequency and feel um, like you need protection as you make changes, right? As you start to lose people, um, gain new people, 
um, have people who are triggered because you are changing and they're not liking it. They're not understanding it, right? So if you need protection as you kind of go through this, please take a look um, at that meditation. It is for your protection, all right? And you can use it as often as you want. Um, and then if you're, oh, thank you, Jackie. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Maggie. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Um, so yes, so that's what we got going on. And if you want to work with me um, for your own ascension journey with integrated energy therapy, just go to my website and you can book right there. And that is super easy. And distance session guys are just as impactful as in person. And the majority of the se sessions I do um, anymore are distant. Um, so thank you for all of you who are trusting me never having met me in person, but forging a relationship with me um, virtually so that we can help you get into connection with the nine healing angels and change your own life. So thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day and weekend. I will be at Crystal Clear Health and Wellness with a new cohort of uh, soon-to-be advanced level practitioners. So I'm really excited. So thank you everyone for your prayers and all of your positive energy. So we have a beautiful weekend together. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Talk soon. <laughs>